Hi, this is Carl with Small Biz Thoughts, and this is another super success video for managed service providers. Today, I want to talk about consistency and why consistency rules when it comes to improving everything in your business. When you think about really good businesses, it's not just that they do things the way you like, which is very important, but also that they're consistent. You know what your experience is going to be, whether it is going to a professional, such as an attorney or an IT service provider, <clears throat> or going to a sandwich shop, right? You want to know what you're going to get when you walk in there. When you have that experience, what is it going to be? Consistency is something that allows you to do branding, marketing, sales, service delivery, checking up with the client after the fact, right? Your brand is built around every single thing you do. And the more consistency you have, the stronger your brand. Now, when we think about consistency, there's a couple of different ways that you can look at getting better. So let's take a step back. We start with SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures. Right? That allows you to say, this is what we do, and this is how we do it. Once you have SOPs in place, now you've got your brand, your service delivery figured out. You've defined how you do it. And now you want to make sure all of your technicians do it within your brand. Okay? So once you've got that in place, you've got the system, you've got it figured out, you've defined it, you've documented, you've trained your people. Great. But it's not a zero one variable. It's not like you just do this once and you're done. Everybody just get in line. That's not the way human beings work. <clears throat> you need training. And what you need to do is over time, make sure that you could hire a new technician and what they deliver is consistent with your brand. And then you need to make sure you can hire five more. You can have them over time. You can have people come and go and your brand will remain the same, which means you need consistency in each technician's behavior, but also consistency between technicians and even offices if you have branch offices. So how do you improve consistency? Well, there's a couple of approaches. The one approach to getting better at your SOPs or anything else is to set up tolerances and say, okay, here's what we accept, right? So everything's got to be inside these uh, parameters. Now think about in terms of manufacturing, think about, for example, uh, an axle. So you've got an axle and each part is made and has to be made within specific tolerances, right? That maybe we're, we're within 0.01 inches left and right for each part, each part, each part. But when you add them all up, if you've got enough parts, well, you might have a tolerance where that the parts on that axle might vary as much as an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. Right? So how do you manufacture so that you're more and more accurate over time? The problem with using tolerance as a way to uh, look at improvement is that tolerances say, look, here's a range of behavior. It's got to be like this. It's, you know, it's, it's got to be close, right? When you say, well, are you saying it should be good enough? No, I'm not saying that good enough, as you know, never is. We can't say that somebody is doing their job if they're just barely outside of what's tolerable, right? Like we want to be on time within an hour. No, no. We want to be on time within a minute or two of when we promised. Early is really good. Some technicians are always early. Some technicians are never early. Some technicians are always late, right? So how do we change that? Well, if you use tolerances as a way to improve behavior, you've got some folks who are always over here, some folks who are always over here, and you want to get them more towards the middle. The problem is if you're going to use tolerances to adjust behavior, 
the only thing you can do is to tighten the tolerances and say we will tolerate less and less and less variation from the center. The thing is, when you, when you think about behaviors and service, you can say these are our tolerances. This is the range that we accept. But what you're really saying is this is good. And somebody might always be over here and somebody might always be over here, but they're both good. And we don't want almost good and we don't want them to be outside of that, but we want them to be in the box that we call good. And as Jim Collins and uh, Morton Hansen would remind us, good is the enemy of great. So if you measure tolerances and all you can do to improve behavior is tighten, tighten, tighten the tolerances, what you're saying is that there will always be a good and that will be it and we're okay and good is good. Well, that's fine. If you don't want to be great and you're not willing to try to be great, then that's fine. You've, you've made your bed and you can lie in it, right? But what if you do want to improve beyond that? Well, there's another approach and it is what's called accuracy, right? So when you think about consistency, how do you get consistent at anything? Whether it is throwing a football or shooting a target or archery, shooting baskets, providing excellent service, being on time for your job, checking in with the client every time, not just every other time that you do service. How do you get better at all the things you need to do? Well, what you do is you say, let's look at consistency. So consistency, the, the variation of behavior when you start is gonna look a lot like it did for tolerance. But instead of saying, as long as you're within these borders were good. Consistency says we're going to always be focused on the center. And so now we're going to just get better and better and better, more accurate, more consistent, more reliable around delivering what we know to be the target that we are after. And if you think about it, you know, so there's some jobs like kicking a football in a football game, right? The, the actual kicker might only have to kick 50 times in a season when it really matters in a game. But does that mean that they only practice kicking 100 times in a year or 500 times in a year? No, they kick as much as they can, 40, 50 times a day so that they can be as consistent as possible. Now, if you have got tolerances, right, to use the football analogy, tolerances, and you say, we're going to make it tighter and tighter and tighter, what you're really doing is moving the goalposts, <laughs> right? But if you look at being more and more consistent, your technicians can practice. And I always give the example of, I want every technician to know every backup system, and every month I want them to practice a restore. It is absolutely not good enough to say, I got a report from my backup uh, vendor, my BDR vendor. They gave me a screenshot that says everything is working fine. The light is green. We're golden. I 100% I guarantee you that is not proof that your backup works or that your technician knows how to restore from backup. Ultimately, Every client deserves to have a technician mount an image of the backup and copy data from the backup and disaster recovery system onto a working hard drive and verify that it worked. This demonstrates that the technician understands the technology and that they can do it and that they are not seeing it for the first time during an emergency when something needs to be restored. So that's something that you could say, well, okay, good. We're gonna do that once. We're gonna train them, check the box. They're trained, they're good to go. Life is good. No, if you don't practice, then you will be back to square one when an emergency happens. And so 
Technicians need to practice a lot. They need to see this all the time. They need to see it inside your company. They need to see it in every single client with a variety of different technologies so that no matter what happens on the day that it's an actually important and urgent event, they can get it right because they've practiced. They, they don't have this wide variation. They get better and better and better and more precise around the target. And so practice allows you to be constantly bringing in the variation so that they're smaller and smaller and smaller. If you only look at tolerances, you can be off to the side over here and be kind of good, good, but not on target. But you can be over here and not be on target. What we want is to always keep our focus on the specific target and then let the variation get smaller and smaller and smaller by having lots and lots of practice. Anything that you do once a year, you're not going to be very good at. So you start with documentation, you start with an SOP, but you need to practice it again and again and again. No human being is going to see something once and then be able to execute it. No matter what it is, whether it's service related or sports related or whatever. So having this opportunity to constantly fine tune your skills, that's how technicians are going to get better at your processes, your procedures, at your customer service, at your marketing, at everything you do inside your company. So when you think about how you evaluate technicians, you can't say, oh, did you pass this test? You're 80%. Okay, good. You know, check the box. You're done with that. You're, you're certified. Now we can just tell people, you know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> we all know that that's not true. You know, when you, when you pass a test, that's good. That means it's gone into your brain at least once. It's come out at least once. That doesn't mean you should be in front of a client relying on that information for the, their security or for their reliability or to just stay in business till Thursday. Technicians need to be able to practice their stuff again and again and again and again. And to be quite blunt, let me just say, if you evaluate technicians on something where you have not asked them to practice again and again and again, what you're really evaluating them on is your management style, not their commitment to their profession or their ability to deliver services. It is the manager's responsibility to make sure that employees get what they need to be successful. And that includes practicing the things that you say are important to get their job well done. If somebody never has the opportunity to do something right, well, Chances that they're going to do it right because they took a class six months ago or six years ago are very, very slim. So it's a simple equation. You need SOPs, you need training, then you need consistency, which means practice, practice, practice. So if you want a quick tip on how to become more productive, more accurate, and more profitable in your business in every single thing you do, Practice those SOPs. They do no good if they're in a nice little folder somewhere in a system that documents everything, but nobody actually practices it. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Polchuk wishing you the best of luck in everything you do.